times I felt like I was paddling through a tree graveyard. The thud my boat made when it hit a tree branch was an eerie reminder of the ghost-like forest I was paddling over and through. These old cottonwoods were once part of a unique desert landscape that was silenced when Glen Canyon was flooded to make way for Lake Powell and the growing needs of the West. These monuments to the past are seeing the sun's rays again for the first time in decades as the water levels in Lake Powell continue to fall. My name is Mitch Popa. I'm an independent filmmaker, and in October of 2022, I took eight days, my sea kayak, and a couple cameras to a place I first learned about from David Brower, the cathedral in the desert. It's a magical place, complete with a waterfall and sandstone cathedral. It's one of Lake Powell's most awe-inspiring stops. I first met David Brower in 1997. He was the keynote speaker at a land-air water conference in Eugene, Oregon, and I was asked to film his speech. His simple, straightforward delivery about why we should give a damn about the natural world inspires me to this day. The way Mr. Brower described the natural world, it's many symbiotic relationships, working in harmony with each other to create the wonderful place we call home, resonated with me, and I wanted to help spread his message that the natural world deserves protecting. I went home and started writing a script for what I was calling wilderness etiquette. The premise was to illustrate how spending time in the wilderness demands an understanding of taking only what you need, and how in the end, even though you didn't have all your creature comforts, your wilderness experience produced memories that will last the rest of your life. I remember getting off the middle fork of the Salmon River once and not being able to use another water bottle for days. It's hard to let go of the wilderness, and it should be. It's the result of billions of years of evolution producing some of the most beautiful places any of us will ever see. My goal was to show people how home life could be just as rewarding as wilderness life, where personal engagement and doing things with each other means more than the constant acquiring of stuff, just because we can or because there's an update. There are consequences for our consumptive habits, and it's the natural world that usually pays the price. Once I had the script, I mustered up the courage and called Mr. Brower on the phone to discuss with him my idea about a wilderness etiquette video. The next thing I knew, I was sitting with him at his kitchen table. I talked about my desire to use my video skills to help teach people to use less and appreciate more. It was then that he gave me a video cassette copy of Let the River Run. I was familiar with his role in the history of Glen Canyon, but I did not know that he had floated Glen Canyon with camera in hand after removing the Sierra Club's opposition as part of an agreement not to flood Dinosaur National Monument. I felt like we had something in common. We both understood the value of using visual media to help show others that the natural world is amazing. It has a lot to teach us, and we should be better students. In the video, he talked about the beautiful light found in the canyon, and I wanted to see if it still existed. So here I am, embarking on an 80-mile round-trip paddle to a place that's only been out of the water a few times since the reservoir finished filling in 1980. Taking off in my 14-foot kayak, I soon realized one thing. Lake Powell is really big. From end to end, it's 186 miles long. It has more than twice California's coastline. In 1963, the dam was completed and began to fill. 17 years later, 1980, it reached what they call full pool. I'm starting my trip from the Bullfrog Marina in the northern part of the reservoir. I'll be paddling downstream to where the Escalante River hits the reservoir, then paddling up the Escalante to Clear Creek and 50 Mile Creek. On my first day, I made it to Lake Canyon. It's a side canyon about eight miles from Bullfrog. There can be limited camping opportunities due to the sheer canyon walls of the canyon, and I didn't want to take any chances on my first day. This was my first side canyon in Lake Powell, and it was beautiful, much different than the main channel. In the main channel, I felt a sense of being exposed to all Powell had to offer. Even at this level, the water's deep, and when you're in the main channel, terra firma seems far away. Definitely a place where you want to stay focused on covering ground and staying upright. The water had a roll to it that was almost ocean-like. My sea kayak seemed a stark contrast to the houseboats and other watercraft that was out for a good time on the reservoir. The side canyons felt much more intimate. 
I was closer to the canyon walls, and I could hear and see everything that was happening around me. The boat motor silenced, and the moment I had been looking forward to since I started researching my trip had arrived. I was all alone, paddling up a side canyon, looking for a place to camp. The lower water levels have made it easier to find tentable camping. I found a great spot, and after getting settled, it was time for a hike. I've always loved hiking in southern Utah, so I took an opportunity to get up on the rim and have a look around. I'm continually amazed at how much life can survive in such water-stricken ecosystems. When I see plants growing out of rocks, and I know this may sound a little corny, but I look at them as my heroes. They thrive on so little and provide habitat for the creatures that call the desert home. An admirable trait for sure. Having never been here before, it took me a minute to realize that much of the area I was walking on had once been underwater. There were signs of times gone by everywhere I looked. I'm walking on the Navajo sandstone. It's more than a hundred million years old and is known for its beautifully colored cross bedding. This cross bedding represents which way the wind was blowing as sand was deposited on the leeward side of ancient sand dunes. It's one of the cliff forming sandstones you see in many of the pictures of Lake Powell and the desert southwest. It's basically consolidated sand dunes that have been shaped and reshaped by various geologic and time driven erosional events. Back on the water, one of the first things that struck me was how the water plays off the walls. Most of my kayaking has been on alpine rivers and lakes, where boat wake tends to be absorbed by the shoreline. In Lake Powell, it takes the water a long time to settle due to the sheerness and hardness of the canyon walls. It bounces off the walls and can last for minutes depending upon the width of the canyon. The boat you see going around the corner passed my camp a few moments ago, and you can see how active the water is still. It's like the water is on a constant quest for balance, but has no way of finding it because sandstone doesn't absorb weight, it sends it the other way. Metaphorically speaking, it's representative of what we all do to find balance. Absorb when we can, deflect when we can. However, it's something a kayaker wants to be aware of and something that makes acknowledging wake-free zones important for the enjoyment of all. Another thing that kept drawing my attention was the bathtub ring that shows how the water has dropped over time. I tried to imagine what it must have looked like when it was full. I also tried to imagine what it looked like when a river ran through it. This footage was shot in October of 2022. The reservoir was 23.9% full and showing signs of a 20-year-old drought that's brought the water level to historic lows. But from where I sat, it was still beautiful. It had been a while since I'd been in southern Utah, and I was feeling lucky to be seen part of it I had never seen before. The mornings are especially beautiful. The winds tend to be calmer, and thus the water is calmer. Staring at the amazing sedimentary geology that is such a big part of southern Utah has the ability to remind one of our place in the universe. It also makes me wonder how the smartest species on the planet, the only species with the ability to understand and appreciate other species, gets itself in the environmental predicament that we are now in. Can you imagine what would happen if we all came together and said we're going to work together and we're going to fix this? In a collective effort, we all get up and go turn off every light we're not using. In a collective effort, we all stop watering grass that's seldom walked on. In a collective effort, we all use our most fuel-efficient car to run around in. And in a collective effort, we all use less plastic. If we look at it as a golden rule thing versus an infringement on our freedom, there is nothing we cannot do. We just have to acknowledge the problem, respect the problem, and take the necessary steps to solve the problem. We need an Apollo 13 moment. Walking around the cathedral, one thing seems evident. The desert will have the final say. The sediment that filled these canyons when the water slowed is now being removed by natural processes. Soils are forming, and life is returning to many of the 125 side canyons that were flooded after the reservoir filled. You can literally watch the change happen. Water drips from the canyon walls and lands on the accumulated sediments. From there, gravity and time take over as water helps transport the sand downstream. Nature is literally showing us in real time that change is the only constant. It's amazing how fast plant life is returning. In his film, 
David Brower mentions they felt the need to be quiet, and I agree. Another spot that's been exposed due to the low water level is Gregory Arch. Located up 50 Mile Creek, Gregory Arch is a 137 foot arch made of Navajo sandstone and spans 50 Mile Creek. It's really beautiful and you can see from the white ring how much the water has come down over the years. I felt lucky to be able to kayak these waters. The glassy water, the reflections, the arch, all of it made me glad to be alive. For me, spending time out of doors is akin to a mental shower. My head clears of all the fog that filters in with the daily grind. I enjoy how simple life becomes. I enjoy the sound of my paddle hitting the water. I enjoy the anticipation of the next bend. I can't help but wonder what else lies under these waters. I understand views differ on whether the reservoir should stay or go, but from where I stand, we're not in control. And the things that we are in control of that could have a positive impact we seem reluctant to do. Too many of us feel that adjusting our lifestyle to one that respects nature and its right to exist is somehow an assault on our personal freedom. I think freedom comes with responsibility. The responsibility of understanding that each of us has an impact on resources and a responsibility to do what we can to lessen that impact. Again, I look at it as more of a golden rule thing versus an assault on my freedom. When I started this trip, I was just shy of my 57th birthday. If there's one thing that's becoming more and more apparent is the older I get, the more important it is to take care of my body. Maybe we need to look at the earth as an extension of ourselves. And if you look at the big picture, it may have merit. Because if we just stand back and watch one environmental disaster happen after another and collectively do nothing about it, how can we ever expect things to get better? I mentioned earlier that one of the reasons I was doing this trip to see if the light that Brower captured was still shining. The answer, yes. Lake Powell is a beautiful place. It will always be a beautiful place. Brower talked about how the beauty of Glen Canyon kept him looking forward to what was around the next bend. Me, and I'm sure many others enjoy the anticipation of upcoming bends. It's part of being human. We're naturally inquisitive. Will our next bend be one where we join forces and solve the problems that face us? Or will we choose the bend where we keep our heads in the sand and just hope the problem goes away? If the Western United States doesn't want the government to tell them how the water will be allocated, we all need to use less. Less of everything. Personally, I hope the bend we choose leads us to a better understanding of our role on the only planet we'll ever know. There's my shorts. <laughs> awesome.